G'day. Today I'd like to talk to you about corrosion or electrolysis. Whichever way you look at it, it's a killer of bugs in the end. I've got a few examples here. This is a tank that has got severe corrosion problems. It's already had repairs done on it over the years. But what we can't see from this side here, it looks quite good, is that when we turn it over, that there are holes all through it. Some of those holes are quite deep. And this is caused from dissimilar metals within the tank. Uh, for example, the pickup on this tank is made of brass and copper. The two breathers are also the same. Okay, they're just dissimilar metals. They don't like each other and they work against each other. And it's the same on a boat. This is the floor of a boat that doesn't look too bad. There's a few holes in it and they're decent sort of holes, but when you turn it over, it is massive damage done and you can see through the through the bottom there all right for repairing of this well it's very difficult you need to get back to clean metal but you can't find any clean metal inside this area so it had to be removed by the time you get to a section here with some clean metal you might as well cut the bottom out it becomes very expensive and this can start from dropping a sinker into the bottom of your boat and leaving it there and not retrieving it. It can also happen in the fastenings that you use to fasten things in. So for example, this fuel tank was fastened in, has to be fastened in with dissimilar metals. Stainless steel is the best of them, but uh, the brass and copper is, is, is deadly to it. Okay, here we cut the tank out here. There's more holes in it. This one here doesn't look like it's got any holes in it. Just the startings of little pinholes. And inside you can see big craters that have been eaten into it. It's only a matter of time before one of those comes through and becomes a pinhole, lets in water, needs to be repaired. So we have lots of dissimilar metals. We have brass, copper, stainless steel, we have steel and we have galvanized steel. Now, galvanized steel is probably the worst one to have. Uh, it will not rot away, it's galvanized but then the sacrificial anode for the galvanized bolt becomes the boat or the tank, whatever you're using. If it gets wet, it creates a, a environment that is prone to electrolysis and then creates this creo corrosion problem. Also not washing out your boat after each fishing trip uh, is also detrimental to the longevity of your boat because bits and pieces will fall down into the bottom of your hull if you don't wash that out and clean it out it will sit in there and fester and then start this corrosion or electrolysis problem and as soon as you put your boat back in the water again it starts again. Uh, the only way to reduce this from happening is to keep your boat clean. After each fishing trip, clean things out, hose it out. How many times do you come home from a great fishing trip? Yeah, that was good, we caught lots of fish, but you just park the boat in the corner, forget about it. 
this is where the trouble starts. Then you need to come and see me to fix all of these little problems. After the problems start and I charge, you know, extravagant amounts of money to fix all of this, I am the blame for it because I'm charging too much. Well, not always the case. This sort of damage can't be fixed in five minutes. Washing your boat out with fresh water is always good to do this afterwards. Uh, also, making sure that sand, grit, grime, fish scales, everything is removed out of the boat, it will increase the life of your boat of doing so. And once a year, I suggest that you pull the floors out, give it a good wash, and even use some sort of Alley Bright, an aluminium cleaner, which is an acid-based, uh, it does dilute with water, but you put that inside your boat, it gives it a really good clean and uh, eats away all of the salt buildup that causes this corrosion. Uh, it eats all of that away and it starts fresh each time you use your boat. I've also been asked whether or not putting an anode on the aluminium boat is a good idea. Uh, I did some experiments when I worked for the Perling Company for, for 15 years. We did experiments with them and we had no value added by putting anodes on the boat. It actually ate severely around the anode and not ate the, eat the anode. Uh, we do have anodes on outboard motors. Let's go and have a look. I've got a, a motor up the back there with a uh, anodes on it. I'll show where these anodes are. All of the anodes only work once they're submerged. They must be under the water for an anode to work. Let's go and have a look at the boat. And here we are at the back of the boat and there's an anode here and there's another anode on the other side here. Uh, there's another one here as well and there's also one under here now all of these anodes are submerged in the water for them to work because there are so many dissimilar metals inside an outboard motor bits of steel bits of brass bits of copper wiring cabling all sorts of bits and pieces every bolt that holds on is, is a dissimilar metal yet you've got the aluminium body of the outboard motor, you've got the block which is aluminium as well, everything's aluminium, you've got steel inside the motors over here, and bolts holding on, all dissimilar metals. They're trying to reduce this corrosion problem by putting anodes on, but anodes only work once they're submerged. Uh, if you've picked up and learned anything today, please like, in the comments below and uh, if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and for all my subscribers thank you for watching